my favorite pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well. But no. the, no. the only cost to you, the student, is for airfare, which we are figuring now will be about $800 round trip special deal for students. Okay. Mm -hmm. In order for you to participate, to obtain the visa and the ticket, we will need to have a formal invitation from the temple. And it's because of that we are informing you of this retreat now. If you think you may be at all interested in attending this retreat, if you think that you may be at all interested in attending this retreat and want to know, know more about it, Please return the enclosed form to me by May 1st, or call me. Reservations are limited, so let me know as soon as possible. Or soon thereafter, May 1st or soon thereafter. Julie Hogarth. Although the retreat is scheduled for two months, it's possible for arrangements to be made for students who have to leave early. Please pass this on to those who uh, may be interested. An announcement in your classes would be good. Thanks. Julie. When's the retreat? What's the date? This summer. Mine also says partial financial assistance is a possibility. Oh, that's even nicer. Yeah. That's even nicer. You have a better letter than I have. Huh. Got another call. From the, the Sita Foundation people, SYDA people down in San Francisco. They want to know when we were coming down? <laughs> and they said that after we left, there was some discussion. <laughs> Subsequently, Saturday, uh, Guru Mai took over the whole program and gave a talk on philosophy and her relationship to philosophy. This was Saturday? This was following Saturday. This following Saturday or last Saturday? I missed that. Okay. We were there Friday. Right. The following day, Saturday, she gave a talk where the whole session was devoted to philosophy. They sent me an abstract <laughs> of her talk. They called. They called and were very excited about it. They called it Sunday night. They called Sunday night? <coughs> yeah. Got it. No questions asked. Why didn't you there? No, they didn't want him there. <laughs> and they mentioned the fact that they were very much taken by her talk, and she was very much taken by us, and she therefore. Felt like we got taken by her. Pardon? Never mind. I thought we were taken by her. No. Well, okay. <laughs> and she said at that time, this is said an honor, that they were going to make an abstract of the talk and send it down. So this is the abstract. Hmm. So I'll read it. Okay. Notes from Guru Mai's talk on philosophy, 42785. It's paraphrasing from the notes. She started the talk by introducing the subject in this way. A professor came up on the Darshan line last night and asked me. A professor came up in the Darshan line last night and I asked him, What do you teach? He said, Love. Then he added, I have come here twice to hear you talk, and both times you didn't. I really want to hear you talk about philosophy. One of the students who came with them even gave me a, bo a book of the philosophy that they studied. So it really started me thinking about philosophy. My country is full of philosophers and philosophies that people don't follow. So I got rebellious about philosophy. I thought I'd, I'd uh, follow into the same pattern as everyone else. So I said I would never talk philosophy. Then Guru Mai tells the story of a shopkeeper, this is an interesting story, who went to talks about philosophy and wouldn't take his son. But one day, 
they closed up the grocery store early and went together to the talk. Afterwards, they opened up the shop together, and as the father waited on one customer, weighing the grain, the son noticed his father cheating, charging the customer too much. The son said, the priest said that you should uh, never take things that belong to another. You shouldn't cheat your customers. The father replied, and this is why I don't want to bring you with me. Philosophy is philosophy. Never bring it into my shop. That's interesting. And this is India's attitude toward philosophy. Huh? It's not practical. Wait a minute. That's not. Wait a minute. I didn't well, change anything. Back. <laughs> no, no, this is why she turned off philosophy. What's the reason? This is the example. Yeah, can't cheat the public. But does she really think that in this particular uh, um, um, This is what I got. <laughs> Sharing everything I have. Oh, it goes on in another paragraph. Shall I continue? All right. All right. Now. Yeah. Hi. Hi, honey. Oh, the kitty cat. Oh, yeah. There's a kitty cat. Yeah. Yeah, it's a kitty cat. Yeah. We'll give you a whole bunch of camels for those shoes. <laughs> All right, now this is her comment. Really, life is philosophy. If we don't follow philosophy in our day-to-day -day life, what does it mean? Where does philosophy come from? It comes from the experience of the philosophers, from their love, from their life. Philosophy is the experience of those scholars. Even if it's hard to understand, there's always one word of it that we can understand and apply to our lives. Philosophy is practical. The Sings Upanishad says, everything that moves in this changing world is enveloped in the Lord, within us, about us. That tells the story about the two disciples given an apple and told to eat it, where there is no one. Could you read that again? I can, it won't help. I will get distracted. <laughs> I'll do it again, though. I thought I, I thought I got distracted by Aaliyah. No, no, no. <laughs> you got distracted by listening. Everything that moves in this changing world is enveloped in the Lord, within us, without us. She then tells the story about the two disciples given an apple and told to eat it where there is no one. Where there is. Where there is no one. <laughs> <laughs> but I did so, Where there is no one. <laughs> Yeah, very clear. But in any case, it is important to learn about philosophy from everything we see. We can't depend upon getting it from outside, or there will be a very dry spell. It's like depending on a well to get water versus boring a pump. The well just accumulates water from the rains and may well be empty. The boring pump, which depends on our effort pumping always gets water because it reaches deep, deep in the ground through our efforts. <clears throat> there is a philosophy of love, of truth of God. The philosophy of life includes all this. Life has to be full of everything or it is empty. <laughs> <laughs> There's no space. I think Reagan wrote that speech. And you have to get it from everything. Well, there's a kind of you have to get it from or everything. That's a, maybe I should do that again and put a little less emphasis on the or. Life has to be full of everything. Or it is empty. Huh? Didn't help it. Okay. <laughs> be careful when you serve that you only help those who want to be helped. She then told the story of a do-gooder, a do-gooder monkey, 
who keeps the fish from the water telling him, I'm helping you. I'm saving you from drowning. <laughs> what? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm killing you. You don't. Yeah, I didn't laugh too like this. Sound like Taysom's things with the bow growing teeth or something? Analogies are well ordered and I'm well off. They're very clear. <laughs> and they relate. I mean, her comments. Oh yeah. Because you perceptive. always you always get water when you go to drill a well. You always do. I mean, you right, never. Water you, there or not. Oh yeah, right. You always get it. Yeah. No, so right. if you put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, much effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Always water. Yeah, a lot of people would like to know. That's, that's why all the land, you know, Central California is irrigated. Oh yeah. There's always water. Always. There's always water. That's why we have so much desert. Yeah. Well, the desert is because of the wind. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't write that down. You're blind. Life is always full. Otherwise, it'd be empty. <laughs> now, I got four more paragraphs. You guys have to let me finish. God, I'm not kidding. It's getting better. Maybe it's good she didn't talk that night. <laughs> practice, so, really. she might have done practice creates <laughs> philosophy. Practice creates mm. philosophy. First, we do the practice. Then we can talk about it. Oh. And then it becomes philosophy. The philosophy of life. Philosophy came from the practices in people's lives. Someone practiced that path, then it became philosophy. What path? Sings. Philosophy. Tuck around. Don't you know what that said, is? I don't know what the word is The only way I can worship you is by seeing you in everything and in everyone. <laughs> it's not exactly clear how that It's nice to quote. Oh, really, she's very poetic. Yeah, she is poetic. There is no heart where there is no God. The philosophy of love is to live in that love. They don't realize that love is a lack and it seems to be. Yeah, no, I had trouble with an object of love. Yeah. But she's dealing love. here. Right? Live People love. ask, don't you get overwhelmed by all of this? Scriptural verse says, just as the snake charmer is strengthened by the mantra and isn't harmed by the snake, so the wise man is strengthened by, by the truth and is not harmed by the snakes of sense pleasures. I'm in Sunday school again. <laughs> No, I'm in Sunday school again. So no, no, I'm that's a pretty good Sunday, Sunday school. Huh? Shall I read it again? I mean, that's yeah, a pretty good Sunday again, school. Because I maybe, maybe I should start attending again. Yeah, well, let, this let one. me do this one again. All right. There is no heart where there is no God. The philosophy of love is to live in that love. People ask, don't you get overwhelmed by all of this? You should report scriptures first, quote, just as a snake charmer is strengthened by the mantra and isn't harmed by the snake, so the wise man is strengthened by the truth and is not harmed by the snakes of sense pleasures. Oh, so the truth just gives you free... Oh, I say, that is a Sunday school that wouldn't yes, be a good idea. Yes, that is a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... Hmm. Once you experience oneness, then there is no fear. The philosophy of Siddhi Yoga is to see God in everyone. That is the experience of Siddhi Yoga. They encouraged us to return, and they enjoyed the encounter with us all. And uh, that's the end of my message. I'm sure we'll all be heading up there very shortly. 80 miles round trip. Well, I'm really not sorry. I went to Shepherd Township. Yeah, well. Can't wait to get a coffee. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Let me start jumping. Where did we go last trip? How far did we get? Did we get into the analogy? No. The extended. Did anybody keep keep going? Uh, How far did we go last time? Uh,
That's a low here. So we went through the midwife range. Is that right? We skipped it over. We skipped yeah. over yeah, the midwife we analogy. Over that. So we were playing. We skipped over what we did up at the ranch. Because are you talking about the three beginnings and? Uh, we went to what? Ninety something. Oh, okay. Then we went to the beginning of the dialogue itself. So. Um, good. Was it 125 or something? No. Okay, I'm going to assume something. So then, we should then have had a comparison. Which analogy? Midwife. Midwife. Oh, okay. Okay, that means right, we should have a comparison, comparing a midwife with a philosophical midwife. We shouldn't be should be able then to find the similarities. get the similarities, then we want to know two sets of differences. All right. <coughs> Both ways. Right. Now, let us assume for the moment that we have a list of Similarities. A, B, C, D. Right. We also have differences. Differences on the side of philosophy. Now, our task should be to see, is it possible that in this dialogue, we can find Examples of Socrates' art functioning in each of the ways he knows. So right, Paul? In each of the ways he noted. Yeah, he noted in the <coughs> section. Yeah. Is it possible that in this dialogue we can find examples of Socrates' art functioning in each of the ways he noted? Um, I think it's true, but I, I don't know each of the ways that he knows it. Right? Should we not? 
be nice. Then we have a ready hand book in that respect. If this is the sum number of ways in which midwifery expresses itself, we might be able to then do a subtraction. Right? And see what's left. And see whether the ways which are not covered but which are specified show up in other dialogues. That'll be our time. Now this is just in the uh, decided the analogy dealing with the philosophical midwife. Yeah. Yeah. Let me direct you, therefore, to uh, section 149E. are not included, which are not included in the enumeration. There may be things in the dialogue itself that are not included in our enumeration. I'd be curious, wouldn't it? Therefore, it's most likely not to occur. Would you say that again? There will be elements in the dialogue that aren't included in A, B, C, or D, etc., or W, X, Y, Z. But we wouldn't be. I thought A, B, C, and D were to come out of the dialogue. So far, I would say that you're operating on 100%. Okay. And there's nothing you have failed to understand. Go ahead, keep going. Then how are we going to find something that's there that isn't there? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's a what does yell mean? What? What does yell mean? Is I agree with you. Is that, what that you is mean? a problem. How are we going to find something under those conditions? Yeah, that's pretty curious. All right, look at you know what we're doing? We're doing the same thing we do in every dialogue. It's this, isn't it? We take the dialogue, we take what we consider to be a key part of it somewhere. Is there not always a key part to it? And then we apply that key part to the dialogue as a whole, do we not? Mm -hmm. We always do that. And when you take that key part and then look at the whole dialogue in respect to that, then that's a kind of a meta view, isn't it? It's a meta view. Looking on top of it, looking at the whole of it. Right. Yeah. This, this way of looking at it may in fact reveal something that's important about the dialogue that is not contained in, though it might be inferred from it, but not directly. Mm -hmm. It would transcend it? Apply? 
transcendent? No, transcendent it doesn't touch. Unless you mean it in some other way. You mean in addition to? In addition to. Say, in the dialogue, the Ajis, what did we do? We applied it to itself, didn't we? And we said, hey, look what's going on in the dialogue when you apply it to itself. Doesn't that account in some way for the dynamics taking place between Socrates, the Ajis, and his father, and therefore the effect of the dialogue on the three participants and how it re reestablished relationships? Didn't it not? That was never said. Right? That was taking a view of the whole, especially from a couple of paragraphs that we went into in detail. In terms of the Theotetus, isn't it? In the Ajis. Yeah. And we're saying the same thing is going to be true okay. in the mm -hmm. So, that's now, <clears throat> that's why I'm saying it's important to look at the analogy and make sure that we get, all, get everything out of it, especially the differences. So, now, I told you to pick a P, did I not? 149E? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of that, then. Yeah, is this particular to uh, the Theotetus? No. Uh, I mean, isn't it true of all of yeah. Plato's works yeah. that you can take? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep your finger on 149E, and I'd like to go back to 145D. Same paragraph we spent quite a while. It starts at 145D and it expresses itself fully at 146A. Then knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. Yes. Well, that is precisely what I am puzzled about. I cannot make out to my own satisfaction what knowledge is. Can we answer that question? What do you say? Which of us should speak first? Well, that is what... Right? Well, that is precisely what I am puzzled about. I cannot make out to my own satisfaction with knowledge is. 149 E. Uh, Terry, got a little? Right. I'm going to read it for him. Right at E, Socrates. But be assured that they are prouder of this than of their skill in cutting the umbilical cord. Just consider. Do you think the knowledge of what the soil is best for each plant or seed belongs to the same art as attending and harvesting of the fruits of the earth or to another? To the same art. So, right, what are we going to consider? There's a certain kind of knowledge which he's just described. And they pride themselves on this more than on cutting the umbilical cord, which is the completion of the birth. And that's matchmaking. They are the cleverest matchmakers, having an unerring skill in selecting a pair whose marriage will produce the best children. Right. They pride themselves more on that than on cutting the umbilical cord. Considering the knowledge of that, that sort. They go together. Right? To understand the seed and the soil and how they relate one to the other. That's, that's uh, very significant, isn't it? To know how it grows and in what soil goes together with skill in tending and harvesting the fruits of the earth, doesn't it? 
This is on the side of McWiper, is it not? This is really, this is really what they take pride in. This is the real kind of knowledge they're interested in. They're the cleverest, the wisest matchmakers. They have unerring skill in selecting a pair. His relationship will produce the best children. that the cleverest matchmakers they can do this. This is where they really have pride on. And then he goes to agricultural images. Right? So they know, right? This is this is like the art of the farmer of agriculture. Art of the farmer. He knows how to match the seed and the soil. Right. He knows how to do that, doesn't he? He knows how to match that. Which sort should be grown in any given soil? And that goes together with right, tending and harvesting. and sowing is not to be separated from harvesting. Right? Not to be separated. Sure puts a lot of effort into that image, doesn't it? Right? Pierre, at this particular time, did midwives serve the same purpose as they do now mm -hmm. to help birth babies, mm -hmm. and that was it? Mm -hmm. So the tending, where does that come in? Physical midwifery, the tending. Tending at the time of birth and harvesting and cutting the... Mid midwifery is not a tending. It's one, it's one of the four arts. It's one of the tending arts. Tending arts, but just tending at the time of birth, right? No. You know what they did So this is tending and harvesting. So that's after after uh, the seed and the soil have been arranged, and we understand that. Now they have to tend the fields to make sure that they have a full harvest. Yes, I understand what you're saying. You're saying, could it not also be that the image of tending and harvesting is still in the birth process? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the idea of a midwife here would extend <coughs> not just to midwifery, but with some kind of child care and guidance that goes beyond that. Yes, you see, that's why the first step is so important. What do they really take pride in? Matchmaking. Matchmaking. It goes beyond. It goes beyond child care. Midwifery goes far beyond just to uh, That's what's interesting about this. If they get the good match, then they'll, they may know that there's going to be good tending and harvesting. That's right. Then they should also be able to give advice on how to raise a child. Mm -hmm. The because whole thing. They know and the harvesting. The whole, the whole cycle. Mm -hmm. That completes the cycle, doesn't it, for the harvesting. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, the fruits the mm. So the image goes far beyond what we would call the limits of a midwife's mm -hmm. art. Well, that's, yeah, sorry. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
And so with the women, skill, skill in sowing is not to be separated from skill in harvesting. Probably not. No, only because there, there is that wrong and ignorant way of bringing together men and women, which they call pandering. Midwives, out of self-respect, are shy even of matchmaking for fear of falling under the accusation of pandering. Yet the genuine midwife is the only successful matchmaker. Right, now, see, what we're doing is we're spelling out here. Yes. Yeah. And if there is this relationship between midwifery and philosophical midwifery, we would want to know what are the parallels. Yeah, I, I can't Otherwise, figure it out. It's not, I don't see it there. Yeah, yeah. Because he starts out where they're pregnant. It seemed to me, I, I can't see. Well, he said he talks about um, if the person is not pregnant, he matches them up with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, would you agree in this image um, what they pride themselves mostly, mostly what they really pride themselves on, is this part. Oh, you like the, the, the eraser? Here, look at this. Oh, that's really something. You like to chew on some um, chalk? <laughs> oh, I'll give you something your mother will try to get it out of your mouth. 30 um, <laughs> There's one word he calls this, doesn't it? He says this is... Yeah? Yeah. This is knowledge. You hear that? It's knowledge. What is he confused about? What is he confused about again? Knowledge and wisdom. Okay. No, no, he's confused about knowledge and wisdom, Paul? No, that was just a guess. Really. Well, I'll go back and tell him. All right. right. What, 146, uh, 146, is it the same thing? 146, a. Well, is it just this that I am, that I am, oh, no. Well, it is just this that I am in doubt about. Yes, uh, that part is is, is 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 what knowledge is. Well, yeah, read it again. Mm -hmm. Read it. Okay. Well, that. <clears throat> well, it is just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts what knowledge really is. What problem does he have? It is just this I doubt. What is it he doubts? What knowledge really is. Yeah, no, finish it. Uh, can, can we tell that? What do you say? Two of us will speak first. And? Yeah, that's good. Oh, I'm trying to read the whole thing now. Well, it is just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts. 
what knowledge really is. Can we tell that? What do you say? Who of us will speak first? And he who fails, and whoever fails in turn, shall go and sit down and be, do and be donkey, as the children say when they play ball. And whoever gets through without failing shall be our king, who shall order us to answer any questions he pleases. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to do something again. Right. Paul, would you read it again? Sure. <coughs> well, it is just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts what knowledge really is. Uh, Carford? Um, well, this is precisely what I am puzzled about. I cannot make out to my, sa my, my own satisfaction what knowledge is. Okay, keep going. Oh. Can we answer that question? What do you all say? Which of us will speak first? What's the difference between the two? Barbara? He's puzzled. One you can't grasp by his own. <coughs> Therefore, he needs a dialogue. He needs oh, someone else. Yeah. Right. He needs a dialogue. A relationship. Right. Does he need a source of opinions? Is that what he means? It is just this I am in doubt about. I cannot grasp by my own efforts what knowledge is. Right. He's got a puzzle about this, doesn't he? What knowledge is? What are you puzzled about? Corn food. Right. Jane, want to do your corn food? Well, that is precisely what I am puzzled about. I cannot make out to my own satisfaction what knowledge is. It's a difference, isn't it? It doesn't require it's my own satisfaction. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't say can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Different text. Yeah, it cannot. Right. 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 You can't do it. Okay, let's, let's, let, let's leave that for a moment and let me push it back now, all right? Would you not agree? Our quest now is to find for everything in midwifery a parallel to philosophical midwifery. Mm -hmm. So therefore there's going to be a, right, a dialogue, right, relationship, something must be produced from it. Right. Uh, if, if, look here, see, he has this kind of thing going. This is like this, but this is like that. Philosophical midwifery <coughs> is like midwifery. And midwifery is like the art of the farmer. Oh, we got a four-part analogy then. All right. Okay. But watch now. Philosophical midwifery is like midwifery, as midwifery is like the art of the farmer. Okay. So that is to say, it's an a mean proportion. Right. It's a mean proportion, four terms. But it is a similar. Oh, not exact. Right. Okay, now that means, does it not, that we have a right then to say, if we can rank arts, if we can rank arts, then we can say, if this is considered to be knowledge, and there is this aspect in, in midwifery, then equally there must be a similar kind of knowledge, though higher, in midwifery, that deals with this problem. Does it not? True. Agree? Yeah. And by the same logic, when we can compare philosophical midwifery and midwifery, we must include everything that we have seen between midwifery and the farmer's art. Making this very long and cumbersome to add just one point. Does that not mean then there must be 
a knowledge <coughs> here too. All right, we'll call that alpha, all right? That alpha must be here, all right, must be here, and its clearest expression is in this example, here. Agree? So we have found, have we not, just right here, where it appears to be pretty obvious that there is necessarily a kind of knowledge in philosophical midwifery. Agree? Paul? Sure. By this logic, right? Developing? And just as it shows itself here in agricultural arts, it must also show in midwifery, and must equally show itself in philosophical midwifery, and as it raises itself from one to two, so it must from two to three. Now, what's his problem? Like, he's the philosophical midwifery. And he's saying, you know what? This aspect, I am either in doubt about or I'm very puzzled about. Depending on which translation you do. Hi, honey. Yeah, come on up here. Yeah, yeah, watch that. Come on. Yeah, watch that. Yeah, watch that. Yeah, watch that. So if he has the art, he has the knowledge. Got the knowledge, but he can't. See but he says, you know what? I'm having trouble about that one aspect. Take the load. It's just this kind of knowledge which I happen to possess, but I'm in doubt about. I cannot grasp by my own efforts what this thing is that I happen to have. Good. Knowledge. Yeah. How can you sing it? <laughs> well, <laughs> does it appear that if we are following the dialogue in this way, we have to deal with that question. Oh, now, notice what, what, what Carnford does with it. Right? Okay. It's softened, so it's mm -hmm. all softened. Yeah, okay. I cannot make out to my own satisfaction what knowledge is. But if the, but if the lobe is, as we say it, it looks like Socrates is a midwife to himself, or at least I was seeing that it, he was a midwife to himself. He's, uh, could How do you see that? Jim? That um, Go ahead. he's in doubt of some about something, and um, okay. Uh, he can't fully grasp it by his own efforts. If he needs a dialogue, that he needs to match it. Himself up with yeah, but then he wouldn't be midwifing himself, would he? Or, or would he? Well, because I don't know. By himself, you mean he needs another party, though? Well, a midwife to himself, meaning that he's he can be he can himself judge who would best be matched to help him maybe satisfy the problem. He recognizes maybe, maybe to satisfy the problem. Watch the maybe. Okay, to satisfy his quest. That's Yes. The purpose of this dialogue is to answer that question. Yeah. Oh, I know. And he's and if he and if a midwife is a good matchmaker, then it may be that he's like he's likely to know people to match himself with those people who would be excellent in that quest of helping him with that question. Yeah, I'll ignore the natives. Okay. Well, then he should have had this dialogue with Parmenides rather than with the Okay. <laughs> There's only one problem. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, because the difference between the and Parmenides. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah but it, how, let's talk about being barren. What's he? What kind of? What's he going to bring forth if he's barren? Well, I was 
wondering how that, in terms of your idea of the dialogue, if that, if the idea of what the most is portraying, how realizing. that would fit into the idea of midwifery. I mean, because if, if it requires a dialogue, then in some way it seems like that. Yeah, would you do it again? If the translation of the load that is, he cannot fully grasp by his, my own efforts, he's recognizing something, seems like in itself, and it requires a dialogue, I was wondering how it was functioning with respect to the analogy. I mean, how could we use the analogy, if it's possible to use the analogy, to understand it? Yeah, you want a solution to this problem. I want a solution. Yeah. You're asking for a solution to this problem. I mean, I'm just saying, how can we use this analogy to... See how Socrates is functioning with respect to himself. Yeah. At that moment. Yeah. Do you have some way of going? Only what I've offered. No, no, no. Okay. That requires now making analysis of the analogy, doesn't it? The midwife analogy. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can you help us with that at this point? Or are you offering that that's what that's that's what we should do? So I agree with you, that's what we should do, is work out the analogy to see if we can use it to solve this problem. Well that I, I can offer only a little bit that that's one of the things that he noted about Theotetus and re- mentioned that he was pregnant. Or he's in <coughs> travail. That is that he when Theotetus could not to his satisfaction answer questions about what Socrates was asking. No. Now do you see the force of Bill's comment? I don't recall Bill's comment. Okay. Bill's comment was, uh, if I can paraphrase it, he, he drew our attention to the fact that Socrates claims that uh, he's barren. So then this is a dialogue which should not take place. He is admitting he has a problem. He's pregnant. Is he not? Socrates is pregnant. And he's now going to help someone else give birth. Does that violate the principles of midwifery? I'm not sure. Well, as I've represented in this section. If he's pregnant, yeah. if being in doubt is, is being pregnant. Well, pregnant, you want to say that's some evidence of having yeah. a problem? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then this dialogue is a farce. Yeah. It means he has an opinion that he doubts. Right. The right. whole thing is a farce. That's what I wanted to put forth. You know, the whole thing is a farce. It's another farce. We see that in nearly every dialogue. <laughs> The guy's pregnant, isn't it? Well, it's all he needs so far. The guy's pregnant, and he's trying to work on someone else, and that violates the principle that the pregnant pregnant midwife should be past giving birth. Right, Patrick? Oh, no. Slip it to him gently. Wait a minute. Yes or no? I'm not sure, really. But, but you do follow the logic, mm-hmm. and you see the way it should yeah. go. Mm-hmm. What should it go? At this point, a real midwife should come in the dialogue and say, look, Socrates, why don't you go and deal with your problem, and I'll work on this kid's problem, because obviously you're pregnant with this problem, you're not past giving birth, mm-hmm. and therefore you really haven't studied the analogy you're, you're so persuasively giving in this dialogue, and you're conning everyone and thinking that you're past <coughs> giving birth, and there you are, pregnant and stuck right in it. Yeah. Agree? Yes. Good. Terry? Good. All we need is three to agree with a great truth. And he thinks he knows what he doesn't know. And already got it from Sandy. She said that. Yes. Oh, I heard it. Mm-mm. No? But I'm not sure. Oh, we don't mind if you're not sure. You do follow the logic. Because I'm still puzzled about the fact that, you know, he says he's barren. Yeah, that's why. It's a good puzzle because how could he be barren and have this problem? 
because that sure looks like he's pregnant, so therefore, obviously, he can't be barren. And therefore, the whole thing is self-contradictory. Yeah. And the whole dialogue is a fake. Right, Jane? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. That's why I was going back to Bill's no. comment to bring it in so you could see what this goes. Well, there's certainly more uh, to the PTA that describes <laughs> when he's involved in labor yeah. or, or travail and what Socrates describes in that sentence. So I, I, I am kind of, I feel kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can we go back to that point where Theotetus discusses his uh, dealings with Socrates, or where he's thought about, you know, thought about the things he said and couldn't yeah. quite grasp yeah. them? Yeah. I mean, it's 148 very, E. What is it? 148 E. Isn't it likely that Socrates can be said to? Uh, Match the 16 points. The six points. Yes or no? Jane, want to read it? Um, well, but I assure you, Socrates, I have often tried to work that out. Right. Obviously, he has in the past tried to work that out. Right? Mm -hmm. We know that from other dialogues as well. Isn't that likely? Well traveled course. When I heard reports of the questions that you asked, well, he works on his own questions that he's asked. But I can neither persuade myself that I have any satisfactory answer. He doubts. Mm -hmm. Nor can I find anyone else who gives the kind of answer you insist upon. No way. Well, that might be a little bit. Doesn't he think he knows you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alia. Alia. Alia, give this to mother. Give that to mother, okay? Yeah, give it to mother. She needs it. Yeah, yeah. You are not empty, but pregnant. Not empty. <laughs> whatever, whatever she's, <laughs> that's the, the end. <laughs> when you tell her not to do something, she does it good. <laughs> so look here, wouldn't you agree, I mean, I, I know all of you are already familiar with this midwife brain analogy since we spent the weekend up there going over it. Uh, but there are a lot of other things that are obviously foolish that clearly indicate that if he is a midwife, he's a rather strange one. He doesn't even fit his own definition and his own description. So I think it's only fair that we form a National Association of Philosophical Midwives, write up an affidavit, Charging Socrates with malpractice. <laughs> and the Have dialogue a trial. with Theotetus. And urge him not to pursue such dialogues in the future <clears throat> until he finishes the course. Which course we can offer for 60 drachma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much is a drachma to this? Oh, oh, man. It is right. <laughs> So, Gina, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but I would suspect. Would I agree to what? Yeah, yeah. Look, you're the one that has this typewriter open. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to write the letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't He's worry about it. You'll get it fixed so that we can make it look good. Right. More important words. Mine Well, that's exactly what we're going to have to do is make it look good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> With your efforts, really sure. it'll be good. Well, I see a lot of other things in here that don't look like they're similar to where Socrates is. Well, I'm glad you found them. Come on, let's list them all down. Steve will write them down. He'll make notes so we can get the letter out. And put it on parchment paper. We'll all sign it. Make some official seal with ribbons. Gold seal. Put it in the corner. Glue it in there. What? 
What? Why not? Why not? Because I don't think that um, you have any valid charges. Oh, it's working, it's working. Don't think you have any what? Valid charges, she said. Valid charges, she said. Well, all we have to do is hear some objection to what we've been saying so far, and we'll all change our minds. Well, does he say he knows or that he doesn't know? I think it's part of his incantation for drugs that he's administering to the atheists. Well, how about reading it, though? Huh? He sounds empty. 150B. Uh, my art of the black tree is in general like that. <coughs> <laughs> All that is true of their art of midwifery is true also of mine. But mine differs from theirs in being practiced off on men, not women, and in tending their souls and labor, not their bodies. But the greatest thing about my art is this, that it can test in every way, whether the mind of the young man is bringing forth a mere image and a posture or a real and genuine offspring. For I have this in common with the midwives, I am sterile and point of wisdom. And the reproach which has often been brought against me, that I question others but make no reply myself about anything because I have no wisdom in me, is a true reproach. And the reason of it is this, that God compels me to act as a midwife but has never allowed me to bring forth. I am, then, not at all a wise person myself, nor have I any wise invention, the offspring born of my own soul. But those who associate with me, although at first some of them seem very ignorant, yet as our acquaintance advances, all of them to whom the God is gracious make wonderful progress not only in their own opinion, but in that of others as well. And it is clear that they do this, not because they have ever learned anything from me, but because they have found in themselves many fair things and have brought them forth. But the delivery is due to the God and me, and the proof of it is this. Many before now being ignorant of this fact and thinking that they were themselves the cause of their success but despising me have gone away from me sooner than they ought, whether of their own accord or because others persuaded them to do so. Then after they have gone away, they have miscarried thenceforth on account of evil companionship and the offspring which they had brought forth through my assistance they have reared so badly that they have lost it. They have considered impostures and images of more importance than the truth. And at last it was evident to themselves as well as to others that they were ignorant. One of these was Aristides, the son of Lysimachus, and they are very many more. When such men come back and beg me, as they do, with wonderful eagerness to let them join me again, the spiritual monitor that comes to me forbids me to associate with some of them, but allows me to converse with others, and these again make progress. Now, those who associate with me are in this manner also like women in childbirth. They are in pain and are full of trouble night and day, much more than are the women. And my art can arouse this pain and cause it to cease. Mm. Well, that is what happens to them. But in some cases, Theotetus, when they do not seem to me to be exactly pregnant, since I see that they have no need of me, I act with perfect good will as matchmaker. And under God, I guess, very successfully with whom they can associate profitably. And I have handed over many of them to Prodicus and many to other wise and inspired men. Now, I have said all this to you <coughs> at such length, my dear boy, because I suspect that you, as you yourself believe, are in pain because you are pregnant with something within you. Apply then to me, remembering that I am the son of a midwife and have myself a midwife's gifts, and do your best to answer the questions I ask as I ask them, 
And if, when I have examined any of the things you say, it should prove that I think it is a mere image and not real, and therefore quietly take it from you and throw it away, do not be angry as women are when they are deprived of their first offspring. For many, my dear friend, before this, have got into such a state of mind towards me that they are actually ready to bite me <laughs> if I take some foolish notion away from them. And they do not believe that I do this in kindness, since they are far from knowing that no God is unkind to mortals, and that I do nothing of this sort from unkindness either, and that it is quite out of the question for me to allow an imposture or to just to allow an imposture or to destroy the truth. And so Theotetus, begin again and try to tell us what knowledge is. And never say that you are unable to do so, for if God wills it and gives you courage, you will be able. Well, two questions then from the text. Socrates pregnant, and should he be midwifing, given the condition that he just stated? Sterile in the point of wisdom, not in the point of knowledge. Well, if he's puzzled about knowledge, then he won't be. Can he be able to give birth to something that he doesn't know himself? Well, he's. Or put it put it in another way, just for just one more point. On the top of 149b. They say that it's because Artemis, the patroness of childbirth, is herself childless. And so while she did not allow, and so while she did not allow barren women to be midwives, because it is beyond the power of human nature to achieve skill without any experience. She assigned a privilege to women who were past childbearing out of respect to their likeness to herself. has been barren, always has been barren. He has no experience. Yeah, that's, that's an obvious doesn't one. Fit. That's an obvious one that doesn't fit. Steve, louder, please. Yeah, I said that's an obvious one that doesn't fit. Yes, but Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd seen that one, but not this other one. It's obvious that it doesn't fit because he's always been sterile and... and well, should we not use this in our affidavit of charging Socrates <laughs> for practicing philosophical midwifery and at the same time violating the standards for that art? Mm. Well, does it say there that uh, it is absolute? Does it not state there that it's necessary to go through a certain kind of experience? Because without it, you, you can't know. Because it is beyond the power of human nature to achieve skill without any experience. If there's a skill in philosophical midwifery, that presupposes an experience. And if he has any childbearing experience in this respect, then would it not follow that the man should never have done a philosophical midwife? <clears throat> then why does, it, why does he stay here that God compels me to act as midwife, but has never allowed me to bring forth? Well, then the, not only will we charge, thank you, not only will Get we the charge God. Socrates as violating the principles of Israel. I was saying that the gods in the heavens have been screwing up the whole process as well. We're going to have to send a double letter. Right, whoever that god was, we're going to have to send a duplicate of that letter out, or should we not? We should have said, look, why didn't you leave Socrates alone so he could have had quite a bit of experience so by this time he will now have been passed and entered and therefore he can match the conditions of the philosophical. Isn't that true, Jerry? I think it's funny, I'm sorry. Yeah, the more I think, the more charges I can bring. Yeah. Good, good. We need more. We need more. Another analogy like 
Does it make sense? Well, I see that's um. You work on it. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> hmm. It's um. To Artemis, uh, to have tried a lot of her, that's, that's something special to her. <coughs> she doesn't have tried. So, Saturday also. Doesn't have wisdom. Well, this is taking a risk. Is that principle still holding that we can charge people a six pack or something like that? No, I don't have any idea. I mean, idea he's back, he's that. making a point that he's backing out of it. <coughs> uh -huh. Well, I, I see that uh, you're taking. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm taking uh, the, uh, the Chinese God uh, as Artemis. Uh, and try to a lot to her as her, that, that, um, that which, as to her special, special thing. Yes. So Socrates, I see as, <coughs> if look at parallel, uh, Socrates does not have wisdom, so uh, he would take, have, a bird of wisdom has, has his special, something special to him. Similar as Artemis take a child, give it to her as something special. So. There's two words there. How about human nature? Too many? <coughs> so? So, Socrates plays a similar, similar role as an Artemis. Not to the midwife. Not to the midwife. But to Artemis. Therefore, Socrates is like Artemis. But he, he, he has been that. given that province, even though yeah. having child, uh, being child bird is something that makes him special as the Artemis. Since Artemis giving to since Artemis couldn't have a province uh, without the art. Well, it's respect Yeah, well, then why is the other Artemis wasn't in my life. She didn't follow the same She's rule. Yeah. <laughs> consider, consider then how it is with all my lives. That will help you understand what I mean. I dare say, you know, that they never attend other women in childbirth so long as they themselves can conceive and bear children. But only when they're too old for them. And he adds to that, but they must have had experience. Physical. And that's a physical reason. Make it stronger. That's part of our affidavit. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Agree? Yeah. That's part of our affidavit. Okay. The man is violating the principles of the world. The model doesn't even have the credentials to get in the club. That's right. Right. Wouldn't you agree, Roger, or not? No. Why not? I don't know why not, because I don't... What are you, on his side or something, because he's a fuzzy old-headed jerk or something, or you like the fact that he drinks wine, or he has parties, or what? He may not know what knowledge really is. Whereas the atheist okay. thinks he does. Hey, is there a knowledge of midwifery? Philosophical midwifery? Well, if it's midwifery. an art, there must be some knowledge if he's using and therefore, farmer analogy. And therefore? 
Come on. Guilty. Why is that? Because. Well, they say because you never known him to screw up. There's got to be proof in the pudding. I've never known him to screw up. There's got to be proof in the pudding. No, those no, no, no. just weren't able to see it before. This is just a dialogue. We can't see it. You got really got to jump on him, you know. Well, look, I tell you what. We can ignore it and make believe that it was just an example of poor writing and go on. Or I can change just to go on because we are sufficient. Yeah, let's what? just cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, we can rewrite this section right. and put, get Barbara to put it in the Greek, and then I'll get a friend of mine to put it on parchment. We'll bake it in the oven for 15 or 18 hours at a low temperature. Roll it up in an old wine bottle. Right? Put a camphor seal on it, because they used camphor, there's a seal in those days on wine bottles, right? yeah. wine jars, and then we'll, we'll say it washed, it washed along the shore, Huntington Beach, and we found it to our glee and satisfaction, and on this basis we're going to have this section condemned as irrelevant and outdated, and put in our new section which will fit uniquely. How's that? Yeah. Right? How's that? We can do that, can we not? We can all appear early in the morning. Monty Library or something. Agree? Come on, we can do it, can we not see? I'll go down to the beach early in the morning. I'll find it. What did we say? That Socrates is not a midwife? <laughs> no, we didn't say it's not a midwife. We're saying, he's he's, what are we saying? Oh, yeah. He's never been pregnant. And he's, he's never had the experience. That's not what it's well, well, what does it say? Correct. He's always been barren. Yeah. Why? I'm barren sterile. means he never had the experience. I'm sterile in the form of wisdom. So what? Well, so doesn't what that. Therefore, he has no experience. No, that's not. Right. Why not? In the Why point not? of wisdom, he's, he's sterile, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have experience in bringing forth. What would you bring forth? Ignorance? No, he has other questions. If he has other questions. Come on. Uh, come on you're well, on the I point now. You're shifting. Well, he's got questions that in terms of the Parmenides and the Symposia and in terms of this dialogue that are other than wisdom. I don't know, I mean, just this dialogue. This is the one that's poorly written. Let's just stay in this one. Uh -huh. well, we'll work on the other ones he, later. Not to deny that Socrates is a Well, he doubts what knowledge is. I don't know if he's pregnant at this point. I wouldn't call him. He looked, he may be. I don't know. I wouldn't say he's Look pregnant. Here. I wouldn't say he's pregnant. He looks like it. I doubt it. I'm not sure. But I'm backing. Well, you're backing back because though. in terms of what it says here, and he um, and the, the reproach which has often been brought against me that I question others but make no reply myself about anything because I have no wisdom in me is a true reproach. Um, Keep I, reading. Keep reading. And the reason it is this: the gods compel me to act as a midwife, but has never allowed me to bring forth. Keep going. I am then not at all a wise person myself, nor have I any wise invention of the offspring born of my own soul. Oh, you never had anything born in the offspring of a soul. <laughs> no offspring born of a soul. Case settled, right? Terry, you're on my side. No. Why not? People who wear glasses should stick together. Right, Paul? I'm sorry. How else, how else can we tell who's intelligent in this world other than by those who wear glasses? Right, Barbara? Right. Right. <laughs> you took your glasses off at that Very time. Very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> It's only a wise invention he doesn't have to want to say. He doesn't say he hasn't had anything for it, so to speak. Well, I don't mind getting it all out, but uh, looks like one translation is clearer than the other, and obviously we should take the one that fits our argument. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Your argument, you were the only one in the room wanting to write this affidavit or you know, do whatever. It's your argument. 
Mind the translation. Could you imagine that? Secular. Here I am trying to be fair for once. Hmm. Well, now look. He's given the province of... No! God compels him to act as a midwife, but never allows him to bring forth anything. Yet he has this, therefore? Yet he has this doubt about no! uh, what knowledge no, is. Okay, so if he can't bring it forth, he finds somebody that can, like Theotetus. Well, then, Theotetus, Theotetus is the midwife. No, Theotetus ha! is he thinking that? I mean, huh? Theotetus. Well, Theotetus thinks yeah. he knows what knowledge is. Yeah, therefore, Theotetus is his midwife. No. Oh, well, Theotetus. Yeah, he needed Theotetus. No, Socrates. Socrates. Sir, isn't he needed it, Theotetus. Isn't the job of the midwife to By my own out efforts, I there? can't do it. I need Theotetus' efforts. Yeah. Yeah. It's all screwed up. Yeah. 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 But he can't, so if, he can't, 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 if he can't bring it forth, if he can't bring it forth himself, then he's empty with respect to knowledge. If he can't bring it forth, he might need a midwife. Oh, God. But the God won't allow him. Oh, yeah, well, the midwife's therefore, job is to bring forth. Socrates is therefore, right? Are Look they? That's what he starts out. He starts out by saying they're the same. Mm -hmm. If they're the same. Have you ever seen Socrates a picture of Socrates? He's homely. Does he? He does. Yeah, he. Huh? There's Socrates. Because he doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> then he must know something about it. Yeah. Right? He's pregnant, yeah. so he must and he know. can't get rid of So he needs the yeah. Atidas as his midwife, doesn't he? No. He needs to know something about it. The whole dialogue is foolish. Well, Actually, this was one of his late works when he was work having work a migraine headache. And we know that right. because of the diet that he was using. Mm -hmm. at the time. I think he only wrote this after the permit. Had a headache. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really think it's on one side. Really and calcium deficiency on the other, which yeah. always brings about earaches and headaches. I think we're going to get a definition of midwife. Is, it pretty <laughs> Is that why you wrote this? Carbohydrates, yeah. 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 It's always a carbohydrate. Yeah, I'm not too sure. You know. It says here it has no excuse. No, 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 through questioning, bring, you know, get what knowledge is out of the okay. yeah. Now that's the job of a midwife. If that isn't the job of a midwife, then... I certainly want to agree with you, but you <laughs> won't forget that, yeah. will you? Huh? No. No, you think. won't forget what you just well, said. Well, I'm not so sure. Wait a minute. <laughs> but we got it on tape. <laughs> right? You have to remember what you said. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't you, Ron? you remember what you said? I was... Oh, okay. Talking with Thanks, Carol. Rhonda. Thank you. Bill <laughs> remembers. <laughs> <laughs> but if he has the experience, he has the experience of wisdom. So there, there's comparable experience. Well, look, wouldn't you agree? One thing we can say. Sometimes it's difficult around here to be able to make many claims, but this one it looks like we will all agree to. All right. Oh, I'm sure. There's at least one person who won't. <laughs> <laughs> in the art of midwife, in the art of philosophical midwifery, Socrates, the founder, give it to him, Aaliyah. Right, the founder mm -hmm. provided an art that does not require. Require any wisdom. Because he was barren of the same thing and all that stuff. Right? <clears throat> Therefore, the mistakes in this are only natural. And uh, it's only natural that he makes the biggest mistakes philosophically when he approaches this field. Since obviously he didn't have any wisdom when he was developing the art. And that's why people who practice the art where would as he a whole. It if he had it? <clears throat> where would he have it? Yeah. Probably in his back pocket. Knapsack. Yeah, thank you. Plastic. Can I pull out his credit yeah, card for one? No, no, but it, 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 does it look like, does it look like, <laughs> does, does it look like he is deficient in the article called Wisdom? Can we say that in that? In that this looks like he's very deficient. And he's talking about philosophical and why? He says, man, there's one thing I don't do. I don't have that. Well, this is an art thing that doesn't require any philosophical and 
Did you bring your daughter around here purposely? Just to make a fool of me? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it by yourself. Yeah, I'm just going to say, you didn't need me help. Aaliyah, go to it, honey. Keep it up. <laughs> Oh, well, <coughs> I don't think it's best if we just skip this part and say it was done when he was rather late in life and therefore didn't have much moxie at the time. <coughs> I agree with you, therefore, this is, he certainly indicates, does it not, that he doesn't have it. He's sterile, yes. Therefore, this is an art that can function without that, wisdom. No. Wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. No, wait a minute. No, he says he's sterile. He never gave birth to wisdom. You know, our problem is we haven't lined up the yeah. right. That's different. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have it? He says he has it. No, he says what? Yeah. He's not a wise person. That he doesn't have it. He's not he's sterile. He doesn't have it. He's not a wise person. He, he has been barred by the goddess from ever Is giving birth from it. Well, I have the whole thing wrapped up. Yeah. Maybe you can't possess that, but I'm, I'm well, not so familiar enough with wisdom. What? I'm not familiar enough with wisdom. You don't have to. You can be familiar enough with the text. Okay. Well, I would say that he has not given birth to wisdom. And it doesn't say that you that midwifery is not required. Wisdom. Look, at, is there anything in there that suggests or says directly with either translation? that he's deficient in the article of wisdom? Deficient? Sure does. Yeah, yeah it says deficient. he's barren. He has not given birth to it. It's not deficient. deficient. All right, good. And if there is, you will take back <laughs> that remark, will you not? Oh, boy. Good. Bill, would you read it to her? Mm -hmm. That part? Oh, you have it? Run with your hand. What, in Cornford? And, and that's good, any of them. Go ahead. My art of midwifery is in general like theirs. The only difference is, is that my patients are men, not women, and my concern is not with the body, but with the soul that is in travail, travail of birth. And the highest point of my art is the power to prove by every test whether the offspring of a young man's thought is a false phantom or instinct with life and truth. I am so far like the midwife that I cannot myself give birth to wisdom. And the common reproach is true, that though I question others, I can myself bring nothing to light because there is no wisdom in me. Ah, end of quote. No, it isn't. Right, come on. It's Does he easy. have any? Trina? He goes into <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I would say that he says that he has no wisdom in him. Yeah, he has. That doesn't uh, mean that From what the quote that, that wrote, a colleague of yours, someone you have known and trusted for many years, <laughs> does not read these that's things lightly. That's referring to being pregnant. Well, he's saying he's not pregnant with wisdom. Rhonda, would you read that line again? I am so far like the midwife that I cannot myself give birth to wisdom. And? And the common reproach is true that though I question others, I can myself bring nothing to light because there is no wisdom in me. There is no wisdom in me. Therefore, we ain't got any. Uh, no, no, no. Therefore, but he, goes he doesn't on. have any. Then in this art of midwifery, you don't need wisdom, which is why it's all screwed up. No. He doesn't need. The cat has decided. Yeah, but he has a better to run from. Then you go on, but the delivery is yeah. due to the god. Yeah. Mm. I think I'm constrained. Yeah, but he has no power. Yeah. I want to give him a power. kiss. He has a power. Well, heaven forbid. Question him to bring the knowledge out of the other. I think I'm going to give him a kiss. Yeah, but he says he has a power. What's his power? Here I come. I want to give him a kiss. I have the power. I want to give him a kiss. That's how I'm going to do mine. Not even afraid of him anymore. Oh, oh, power to prove by every test. Whether yes, it's power. He has a power to prove uh -huh. by every test whether the offspring of a young. Just as funny looking as ever. <laughs> Not like your father. <laughs> well, <sighs> look here. Why don't we agree just to skip this section? <coughs> what do you think, Sam? Uh -uh. Why not? <laughs> 
Beautiful. Don't you realize, as some of you who want to be midwives, isn't it nice and refreshing to be able to tell people, there isn't any wisdom in the midwives of the longer. It's obvious. The founder declared it, and uh, no, you don't need any experience yourself in it. And, uh, but aren't we wondering about knowledge? Just says the midwives. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Good to worry about knowledge. Comes he was forward. worried about <laughs> Week she took a quantum jump, didn't you? And development was nice. Yeah. It's really coming up. Well, that's how you get under. Well, I'm really concerned because well, she's so head? shy and this drama. That's true. I really, that's really caused Bashful? me a lot. Yeah. Afraid of people? Yeah. I'd really worry about them. I would too. <laughs> and you. <laughs> See, didn't he get little? He's in the box here. Is that dad? Is that dad? Time to quit. Thank goodness. Thank Listen, you know, because I have heavy responsibilities with getting her together. Getting her I mean, it's easy for Nancy, you know. All she has to do is get the breast work. Me, I have to do everything in the house. There's daddy. Do you see daddy on that thing? Aaliyah's busy getting you together. <laughs> <laughs> she manufactures the jet juice. I don't know. <laughs> you go around picking up the what's left over. <laughs> Afterburners. Yeah. Oh, she just said hi to you. Want to say hi to Hey, look on the TV, Leah. She looked at the TV and she went, hi, TV. It's on you. It's on you. Hi. 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 Skip this and come back to it next. Go on from this point. Yeah. Obviously, it's uh, unintelligible. It's the work of a mediocre. Well, we have to work on that. Well, what is it that you want us to? Uh, I think we need to line up the terms. Who wants us to write up an affidavit? <laughs> line up a letter, as I said, an affidavit, so we can put it on some kind of heart. Or, or we don't give him a whole heart. Okay. Well, you you can do the first part. Well, we have been doing it this evening. I mean, there's some argument against each of these points. <laughs> now, look here. If we were, if I were to ask you, it's something. Is it not like, like the problem you have that sometimes with people who are reading the Apology? No yeah. one wants to vote that Socrates is guilty, right. and they get uptight because they like the old guy. Right. That's right. right. But the fact is, he was guilty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it's not just. Uh, we, the point is not whether he's whether the charges were just or not. Oh, the charges, whether whether he's guilty, guilty of the charges. Of the charges. Yeah. Was he guilty of the charges? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, I had I had seen that at one point, not not implying that I would vote that way. <laughs> 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 Uh, like this. Mm. Well, so, uh, 
ignorant people trying to uh, oh, you uh, get have rid to, of you. You would have to resist.